Hi, this video is an excerpt from the final chapter of the TK7 video guide in which I'm taking you through a complete workflow of a single image using the TK7 panel. Uh, the other parts of the TK7 video guide take you through all the buttons and features and functions of the TK7 panel and show you what they are and how they work. And I give lots of examples, but seeing how the panel works and how I use it in my workflow can be really helpful. So I hope seeing this part of the video is helpful to you. The rest of this chapter includes some Lightroom adjustments and other Photoshop adjustments. Um, but this is the part that you can really see how I use the panel. So you can get the TK7 panel and the TK7 video guide at Tony Kuiper's website or my website. So I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, what do I think the image needs now? Well, now I would like to darken this corner of the sky a little bit because of my polarizer. I've got some polarization here where the center is darker than the edge and that's not uh, really looking great for me. So I think I'll maybe try to do that with a hue and saturation adjustment targeted to those tones. So the first thing I wanna do is look for a mask that's gonna maybe target that right. So let's check out a blue channel. And actually that looks pretty good, but I do wanna mask it just to this area of the image up here. So I could use the mask, the rapid mask feature to modify it. I'll start by clicking a lasso tool and drawing around the area where I want that adjustment to go. And then I click the mask, the rapid mask modification button. And now it creates a mask that'll just target that corner of the image. And now I can come down to the layer output and select a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And then I'm gonna bring down the brightness there and work with the saturation and maybe the hue a little bit to try to get this to match up better with the other parts of the sky. And maybe somewhere in there. And also the way the mask is feathering right along this edge isn't quite enough. So I'm going to take a black brush at a low opacity, maybe 20% and just feather this side of that adjustment in just a little bit more to make sure it's nice and natural. What I think the image needs next is now to slightly lighten the blue sky in the middle. So I'm gonna stay with that same blue source, I think, but I'm also going to use the pick tool to try to pick that tone right in the middle and see if we can find a zone mask that will really exactly get it what I'm going for. And in this case, uh, it's getting the clouds too. Let me check the zones on either side and see if there's another zone that will better target just that area of blue sky. Actually, the zone four, if I maybe work with it a bit, will do a good job. I think we'll try that. In this case, I'm just gonna try dodging it or luminosity painting it to lighten it. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that mask as a selection. And then I'm gonna create a dodge layer. And then with the white brush, I'm gonna paint through that selection at a very low opacity, maybe just less than 10%. And see if I can just very gently lighten that center area of blue sky. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I'm over lightening the, uh, the clouds just a little more than I want to. So I can pick the gray brush tool and bring up the opacity and use that to just kind of erase that out of the edge of the clouds here and here. Now let's see how that's looking. Yeah, there we go. That feels better. And I can even work with the opacity of that layer to get the just the feel that feels right. And now deselect that luminosity painting selection I've got active and ask myself, what do I think the image needs now? I like how dark the rock is on this side because the sun is coming up right behind it. So that feels right. But some of these shadows in these rocks are a little too dark and lacking of detail. So I wanna create adjustment to lighten the shadows a little bit and bring out a little bit of detail. 
So for that, I need a mass that will target those shadows and probably from the red channel because those rocks look pretty red. But let me also check out the yellow channel. And remember that those CMYK channels are inverses. So let me check out the, uh, the darks here. No, yellow's definitely not doing it. Let me go back to the red and the darks. And I think maybe a darks three, uh, if I modify it to open up those deepest shadows even a little bit more, maybe even with the uh, midtone slider a little bit somewhere in there. I also know that I only want this to affect the rocks on the left side, so I can further modify it with a black brush. And I'll set the opacity to about 50% for that brush, and then just use that to, uh, to paint out that adjustment. Actually, I'm gonna go up to, uh, I'll go full 100%. I really don't want that adjustment over here at all. And so I'm gonna paint it out everywhere. I don't want it in the mask. So just another way to modify this mask. Okay, now I'll add that mask to a brightness contrast adjustment layer and use that layer with that mask controlling it to bring up the brightness of those shadows and maintain contrast in those shadows and find what's the right amount there. And sometimes I'll overdo it at this stage and then use the opacity of the layer itself to get just the right amount. Now the other thing is I want to also add some clarity into those same shadows. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and run the uh, clarity action and I'm gonna zoom in to look at that area of the image up close. I'll come back here <laughs> and find the right amount of clarity. And since it's in the shadows, I can use probably a bigger clarity radius to try to get into some of those shadow details and click OK and zoom back out. But now I don't want that clarity applied to the whole image. I just want it applied to those same shadows that I targeted in this mask. So I can hold down the Alt or the Option key and then drag that mask up to this layer and that will copy it and let it control that layer as well. So now that clarity is only happening in those deepest shadows and I can work with the opacity of the layer to get just how much I want. Next, I feel like the overall highlights across the image are a little bright or I don't know, they need some, they need some additional work. So I'm just gonna load a composite luminosity mask and that's just the lights one. And I think that's working pretty good for me. I'm just gonna go ahead and add that to a curves adjustment layer. And then darken the whole image and maybe work with the curve to maintain some contrast. But just do that across the image to do some more highlight control. Now it's a little stronger in some areas than I would like, but the mask is generally doing a good job controlling that. I can click the X button to see what that adjustment would look like if I didn't have that mask. So you can see that luminosity mask is doing a good job of protecting the shadows, but now I wanna mask the mask because I, I wanna bring it in locally and kind of variably, but I don't wanna lose the, uh, the characteristics of that luminosity mask. So I'm gonna add this to a group with a black mask by clicking the left side of the group button. So now it's in this group with a black mask and that's concealing the adjustment. And now I can paint with a white brush on that black mask. And uh, here I'm gonna use 100% opacity and a low flow, maybe uh, 10 to 12%, something like that. So now I can just kind of brush that highlight adjustment in around the image and just kind of create the uh, highlight control that I want in the areas I want, the amount that I want it. All right, let's see how that's looking. Yeah, that's feeling like it's getting some really nice balance throughout the image. 
And I think you can see that in this way, by continually asking yourself, what do I think the image needs next? You can keep working on things incrementally, one small thing at a time. And how do you know when you're done? Well, when you get to a place where when you say, what do I think the image needs next? There really isn't anything. Now I'm definitely not completely done with this image at this point, but we're well over 20 minutes into this chapter and I could really go on for hours. But I am gonna do one final set of adjustments to this image just to kind of put the finishing touches on it for right now. And that is to add a bit of vignetting to darken the edges and contain your eye and also some spotlighting to help draw the viewer right into the center of the image. So that's easy to do. I just grab the lasso tool and I draw my vignette where I want it to be in the edges of this image. Maybe something like that. And then I run the freehand vignette action. And that's a little more feathering than I want. So I'm gonna bring the feathering down a bit. Yeah, that looks better. And then I can work with the opacity of the freehand vignette layer. If I wanna maybe darken it even a little more. And now I'm gonna work with the spotlight and I wanna try to draw people into the center of this image, maybe here, and also maybe back into the rocks in this water back here a bit, and maybe even right onto this rock a little bit. Something like that. All right, so now I'll run the spotlight action. And the feathering for that feels good, but I can work with the overall brightness of the spotlight, and I can also open up the curves layer adjustment and further work with the contrast in the spotlight. Maybe something like that. And then I might select both of these layers and just add them into a group so I can control them all together at the same time. And I might call this, uh, sometimes I'll call this dimension because it helps create dimension in the image. And if I was being uh, careful about all my developing, I would name all of my groups that I'd made. So I would remember what they do later on. Uh, okay, but let's say for now that we've gotten to the end of what I'm gonna do with the image so far. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt or the Option key and click on the eye of the background layer so we can see this is how the image came out of Lightroom. And this is how the image looks now after addressing a lot of those different things that I felt that the image needed. Now it would be time to save my master file with all the layers intact so I could come back and work on it again in the future. And if I felt like I wanted to share this image at this point with someone, uh, maybe through email or on the internet or on my website, then I could come down here and say, okay, I wanna web sharpen this to be 1500 pixels wide. And I'll go ahead and click the horizontal button. Oh, I do wanna play the action to put my watermark on it. Everything else looks okay. So go ahead and size that to 1500 pixels wide. And there is the final sized and sharpened web image ready to share. Now I just click the green save button, save it, and I'm done.